of course, so much talk still about the vaccine at the moment. Just beginning with you, actually, Jared. I, I don't think it's indelicate. I hope not to mention that you are eligible still, according to the official advice of the AstraZeneca vaccine, being in that 50-plus bracket. Are you confident in taking it? Uh, look, I think the risk of taking the vaccine is very low. I think the risk of taking COVID is very low. I think people should be entitled to make whatever decision they feel is in the best interests of their own health. I probably will take the vaccine, um, but yeah, so yes. You, you probably will. The official advice from the government is that it's safe for over 50s. We never know when there's an outbreak. Why is it only a probably? Well, I have, to, honest, to be honest with you, Tom, I haven't really thought about it. I'm not really that worried about it. I don't go around living my life worried about vaccines. The important thing is that this year, we haven't had a death from COVID in Australia, other than those people who've come from overseas. Uh, we've had a very strong job recovery. Uh, we've actually recovered all the jobs uh, that we've lost in the original downturn from the shutdown from the initial COVID. And I think they're the things that we need to stay focused on. Yeah, but to get a lot of them back, I mean, not all the jobs, there are still some jobs that haven't restarted in particular areas to get that confidence going again. We need people to get the vaccine. Why not stick up your hand and say, yeah, I'm confident in it? Sorry, what's that? Well, you talk about getting jobs back. We don't have all of the jobs specifically. There are plenty of jobs haven't sure. returned. We need international travel to return, so they're not all back. I'm just asking why yep. you, you're a bit reluctant to give more confidence in the vaccine, that is. Well, 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 I have. I just said, I mean, you know, people want to take the vaccine, they're more than welcome to take it. I'm not saying don't take the vaccine. I mean, the, so the medical uh, fraternity has said take the vaccine for people over 50, that's fine, take it. I, I'm not trying to destroy confidence in the vaccine at all. You're putting words in my mouth there, Tom. The key thing, no, if you I'm want to get asking, confidence I, back... I didn't say this and, I, and I've spoken... I just said you said probably. I was just asking about the probably. OK, so if you, if you want to get confidence back, you want to keep the borders open, OK, you want to keep businesses open and keep businesses moving. Whether or not we take the vaccine here or not, it's not going to change the outcome with international borders. And it's worth noting that there's plenty of countries who have got their vaccine rollout going on, but people are still dying from COVID. No-one is dying from COVID here in Australia who have contracted it here in Australia. That oh, but is hang on, you're saying that here. how much, how many uh, people all, in Australia take the vaccine doesn't affect... And all the talk about maybe some possibilities with vaccines. ...international borders. That's not true, is it? Our vaccine rate will absolutely have an impact well, on that. Well, Nobody if gets people, vaccinated... Or if not people aren't going to open up... People aren't going to open up their borders based on whether or not we have the vaccine rollout here in Australia. We're still going to expect people from overseas to be vaccinated before they come here. But it's us opening up our borders, here. too. Or they're going to have to have two weeks in quarantine. Sorry? It's also about us opening up our borders, letting people fair, travel. Uh, yeah, sure. OK, well, if you want to open up our internal borders, OK, then state governments need to keep their borders open, right? Well, it's talking so external. We don't I mean, need, look, we're quite I, capable just of doing that because we don't have any cases of COVID. Nita is there as well. Nita, where, where do you sit on confidence in AstraZeneca? Do you think people 50 and over should have full confidence? It's a very cautious approach from the, the government excluding, or well, not excluding, but advising those younger than that, not to necessarily get it. Where do you sit on confidence? Well, we should be following the advice um, that's been given to us from the experts. But on confidence, can I say this? I was at the Cairns Airport this week to talk to tourists that have come here during the tourist season, um, Easter season, um, and it is definitely playing a role in the confidence that tourists have to travel uh, interstate. Uh, and when we get our international borders open, it will play a role in that as well. Uh, they know that the only defence that we've got at the moment to containing an outbreak is um, small amounts of quarantining, uh, lockdowns, mask wearing, um, and also contact tracing. Now that's working at the moment, but I think what you're feeling out there is people thought that we would be over that sooner. And now the delays to the vaccine rollout mean that we're gonna be dealing with those things for a lot longer. I wanna talk about not the past, but where Labor thinks the government should go from here on the vaccine. We've heard a lot on the past. I just want you to put that to one side. What should the government be doing from here in terms of vaccine supply? 
Well, in terms of the vaccine rollout, what I really want to know immediately, and this is what we need to find out in the next couple of days, is what the plan is and where uh, we are going to roll out vaccines and who we're going to roll them out to. Because it feels like since that decision, um, which was an important decision to make around the AstraZeneca vaccine, that a lot of the planning has uh, gone to the wayside and we don't have um, targets. So that's what I want to see from the government right now. We, I live in um, regional Queensland and one of the things that really struck me when AstraZeneca, when the decision around AstraZeneca was made, was the impact that it will have on remote and regional areas. Um, and we don't have that information yet from the federal government about how they're planning to roll out vaccines in remote and regional areas now that we don't have access to AstraZeneca. Just finally on this matter then to you, Jared, were you a bit disappointed? No timeline now from the government? Well, no, because we're always dependent upon international supply lines and Europe has uh, not agreed to export all of their vaccine supplies. And Labor have got a high to criticise the coalition when it was actually Paul Keating who privatised CSL. Now, had we kept CSL in private hands, and I admit that it's been a fantastic company in private hands, but had we kept CSL in the public hands and we'd focused CSL on producing vaccines, we would not be in this situation now. So it's a bit it's hypocritical of It's such a ridiculous argument. It's such a ridiculous argument. You on international are the government that is in, in charge okay, of you're interrupting me, Nita. I didn't interrupt you. You're interrupting, Nita. I just okay. You're interrupting, Nita. Ridiculous. Please don't interrupt. Okay. <laughs> CSL. Okay, was sold by Paul Keating and Gary Johns, who was a Queensland minister, health minister at the time. And these are the questions that need to be asked about privatisation of what I would consider infrastructure that provides essential services. So unfortunately, and I think it does beg a, a good question as to, mm. you know, are we as a country over reliant? on uh, international mm. trade when it comes to the provision of health. And, that, and that's the real issue that we should be discussing here. OK, so we're really out of time. A couple of quick and ones on this. As to when the rollout was going to happen. Yeah. Nita, do you, first of all, nobody saw this coming, this need in particular for an RNA vaccine or necessarily sovereign capacity. You know, Labor wasn't calling this for before either. So you might say the government, you know, was a bit hoodwinked on this, but so was Labor, right? Nobody was calling for this capa uh, ca capacity before COVID. Well, it's not about what happened before COVID. It's about what happened when COVID began. This is we've been dealing with this for 12 months now, and it is um, ridiculous to suggest that the government didn't foresee that there might be a problem with one of the vaccines. We obviously hoped that that wouldn't be the case, but to think that we put all our eggs in one basket and now we're here in a situation where most of the Pfizer vaccines that we have ordered won't be available until the end of the year, it's Poor planning from the government, and well, to try to well, deflect it the way that vaccine. Jared has but today, you have to put all your eggs um, in one just basket. Just shows that they're not doing the right well, thing. Very quickly to you, Jared. We still haven't had an announcement. We're going to make RNA vaccines. We're going to get that capability in Australia. Would you like to see that? You're the government now. Uh, look, absolutely. I, 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 I said this in my maiden speech. I was against the privatisation of essential services. But can I just reflect on the words of Professor Ian Fraser from Queensland University last year in an ABC article that I'll post later on. He actually said it is very difficult to produce a vaccine for uh, an influenza or, or a, a virus-like uh, virus in the upper respiratory tract. So the idea that we were just going to turn around in 12 months when COVID broke out, they've been looking for a vaccine for earlier versions of SARS and COVID for the last decade, and they've had All a right. lot of difficulty in finding a cure for that. So it's not an easy thing to just go, we're going to suddenly find a cure for influenza okay. well, or, or a virus rather like than, influenza. Than cure. Yeah.